Hey guys, it's Mr. Eisens here. Um, we're going to be hopping into energy transformation notes um, and just making sure that we we all got photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Uh, we know what's going on and uh, we're able to write those equations down. So by the end of this, we should know um, the two processes of transforming energy, photosynthesis, um, changing light or radiant energy into glucose or stored energy, and then... Um, as well as cellular respiration, which is going to take that glucose and it's going to turn it into um, energy that we can use called ATP. Okay, so photosynthesis, um, you might look around anytime you're, you're outside really and, and see a lot of green things. Okay, um, that is an indicator of photosynthesis. Um, plants are green because of their chloroplast and the chlorophyll, which is the pigment that is green. And it's able to convert radiant energy here in the middle, okay, radiant energy um, from the sun, okay, energy that we, the sun is um, shooting out, all right, it's able to contain that energy and put it into a form that we can actually use, okay, into chemical energy that can be used to fuel organisms, all right. So um, all living things either eat plants or they eat things that eat plants, all right? So think about that for a second um, and kind of think about, you know, what, what do you eat, all right? Um, and, and how all of our energy really comes from the sun because plants can do that, all right? Because they're autotrophs and make their own energy, all right? So where does it occur? Well, it's gonna occur wherever there is a chloroplast. Um, so all the green that you see, at least in plants, they're going to be doing photosynthesis and transforming the sun's energy um, into sugar or glucose is the uh, specific word that we're going to use. Um, so these are kind of the words that, that we're going to be looking at and need to understand uh, because you are going to have to write this equation out um, and, and you're, you are going to have to be familiar with it. All right. So um, the plants are going to take... Um, radiant energy, carbon dioxide, and water, and they're going to turn it into oxygen and glucose, two things that we need to survive, right, as uh, humans, okay? Um, here's a video if you'd like to watch it. I'm not going to show it in the video. Um, uh, so let's, let's just think about for a little bit, all right? Our body takes in oxygen and releases carbon dioxide. So take a breath. All right, so I was breathing in oxygen, and then I breathed out carbon dioxide or CO2, all right? Um, we need both of these in balance in order to survive. Um, we need oxygen. If you don't breathe in oxygen, you're not able to survive. And so I want you to think about that. It's, it's, I know a lot of students have, have trouble explaining why we need air, all right? It's such a um, automatic thing. It's just, oh, we need it. Um, we need it so our, our blood can have oxygen. But what is the real purpose of having oxygen? All right. And so the real purpose is actually going to be cellular respiration. We cannot do cellular respiration if we do not have oxygen. Okay. And so cellular respiration is going to be the process of breaking down food that we eat, which is going to be glucose, into energy we can actually use. So if we can't break down energy, can't break down stored chemical energy, we won't have any energy to use, and then our body's going to wind up shutting down. That's where uh, people pass out because if you hold your breath too long, or um, it's, it's why we need oxygen because we, if we don't have energy, we can't keep our brain running. If we can't keep our brain running, we aren't going to be conscious and we're going to pass out. All right. So keep that in mind. All right. So cellular respiration. Um, just a reminder, plants also do this. So plants not only make their own food with photosynthesis, but they also need to access that glucose, the energy within that glucose um, by using cellular respiration. So plants do photosynthesis and they do cellular respiration. All right. So keep that in mind as we move forward. All right. So photosynthesis, we're going to go over first the equation that we need to remember. Um, I want you to remember the words and the symbols. Okay, the words and the symbols are important. So um, the words are going to be water, as you can see here. Okay, water plus carbon dioxide is when in the presence of sunlight or radiant energy or is going to give us glucose, which is sugar, and oxygen. All right. Now, these are kind of long words and hard to write out at times. And so sometimes you'll see it written with the symbols. So it's a lot easier to fit 
and then we understand uh, more specifically what exactly is glucose made out of, what exactly is carbon dioxide made of. So we have all the atoms that are in these, um, these substances and we have it listed below. So water is also known as H2O because there's two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Okay, carbon di, di meaning two oxide, so one carbon, two oxygens. Okay, um, then in the presence of radiant energy, we can make glucose, which is going to be six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. Okay, and lastly, oxygen. Um, in just pure oxygen is known as, oh, excuse me, is just known as O2. All right. And so photosynthesis is going to be the process of making chemical energy or transforming radiant energy or sunlight into sugar. Okay. Sugar that can be eaten, um, and used by the plant or by whatever, um, eats the plant. Okay. And so this is what kind of fuels, all the living things, uh, multicellular animals on earth. Okay. We get all of our energy and, and single cellular as well. We get all of our energy from the sun. So no sun, there's not going to be us. Okay. So keep that in mind. All right. These are, this is the important information right here at the top. You need this. Um, you need to understand, um, what is going on. So we have our reactants on the left and then the arrow always points to our products. So the products is what we're making, whereas the reactants are the pieces that create the product. Okay. I just put together a grill the other day. And so all the pieces of the grill, all the metal things that make up a grill, I had all the pieces and I had to assemble them. I had to put some energy in, in order to attach them and screw, screw things into place. So then I could come out with the product, which was my, my grill that I made. All right. So keep that in mind. We need our reactants and our products. So let's keep going. Uh, cellular respirations next. And so we have the same setup here. We're looking at the reactants or the things that you need in order to do cellular respiration. And then the products are the byproducts of actually um, doing cellular respiration. And so you see that we get that energy here. Um, so first off, we need glucose and oxygen. Interesting. That's exactly what the plants are making for us, right? Um, they produce glucose and oxygen through photosynthesis. And now we're going to take that glucose and oxygen. We're going to put them to work. Okay. We're going to create energy for ourselves so that we can survive, so that we can move around, so that we can think, so that we can do absolutely everything that we do. All right. Everything that we do takes energy in order to um, execute it, in order to do it. And so we need these two um, energy molecules, glucose and oxygen. Then we're going to go through the process of cellular respiration. We are going to breathe out water and carbon dioxide. Breathe in oxygen. We ate some food today, which would be the glucose. And we're going to breathe out carbon dioxide and water. If you've ever been outside when it's cold out and you see your breath, that is actually the water molecules that you see. Okay. Now the most important product here is going to be that ATP energy. Okay. And ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Don't worry about memorizing that. All I want you to remember is that it's made of energy. Okay. It, it allows us to actually use that energy right now to move around and do things. Glucose is the way that we store it. Okay. We store it for later when we actually need it. And then ATP is when we actually want to use it to move around, lift weights, um, pick things up, put things down, um, think everything that we actually do within our body. All right. So we have a little cycle going on here. Photosynthesis is going to produce the things that we need in order to do cellular respiration. And cellular respiration is going to produce the things that photosynthesis needs in order to do photosynthesis. All right. And so photosynthesis needs um, carbon dioxide and water. It's going to produce um, a carbohydrate or sugar, okay, sugar and oxygen. Then we are going to breathe in that oxygen. We're going to eat that carbohydrate, okay, or sugar, glucose. Um, then we're going to convert that into carbon dioxide and water, which we're going to breathe out in which plants can finally recycle that carbon dioxide and water. All right. So basically we're just converting the sun's energy 
into stored energy and then into energy we can actually use in the form of ATP. All right, so I want us to walk through this. Um, this little slide right here, I'm going to wait till the um, beginning of it. I'm going to move my picture out of the way. But uh, we are going to just show you how this works. So we got glucose on both sides. We got oxygen on both sides. And you can kind of see how now we have the arrow. Um, cellular respiration is going to create the reactants for photosynthesis. So really the only difference between these two equations, you guys, is A, the energy and where it is. Okay, so pointing out the energy is light or pointing out that the energy is in the stored molecule known as glucose or pointing out that the energy is in the ATP and also the arrows. All right, so cellular respiration going forwards, okay, is producing CO2 and H2O. But if you just change the arrow around, you'd actually have the photosynthesis formula. So it, once you, if you know one of them, you actually know both. As long as you just remember, when you do photosynthesis, you take ATP energy. And you, where are we getting the energy for photosynthesis? We're getting it from the sun, right? So you got to put light or radiant energy. All right, lastly, you see reactants are on the left. Remember, the reactants are the pieces of the puzzle that are going to point to the finished product. Okay, after you put all those pieces together, what do you get? That's where the arrow is pointing to, the products on the right side. So reactants on the left, products on the right. Now you could flip the arrow, which means you'd have, you'd flip where the reactants and the products are. All right. Um, lastly, I'm not going to talk about lactic acid for very long, um, but lactic acid is basically a way that our body can get energy when we don't have oxygen. All right. And so typically when we do cellular respiration, we're going to get 36 to 38 molecules of ATP. Um, when we do lactic acid fermentation, we only get two. So you can see that we get 18 times more energy when we use cellular respiration or when we have oxygen available. So lactic acid fermentation is going to happen when we are really pushing ourselves physically and we can't get enough oxygen. So when you're running and you um, can't get enough oxygen, you start to breathe super heavy or you're lifting weights. Okay. And you need more energy to push that weight. All right. This is what our body's going to do. And this is what's going to make us sore. Okay. In the morning. All right. So, so lactic acid is going to take a glucose molecule. All right. But we don't have oxygen. Right. And so we're just going to take that glucose molecule and we're going to break it down and we're going to get a little bit of energy out of that. And we're going to get some lactic acid as a byproduct. All right. That's not necessarily super fun. Uh, because that lactic acid is going to build up in our muscles and make us sore. Okay. But it allows us to get that extra burst of energy um, to get us through um, whatever we're doing or to, to help us run um, even when we're low on oxygen. All right. So that's all I'm going to say about um, lactic acid. But you have your word, the words in the formula right here, the symbols. Um, so make sure to um, take a look at this. Uh, what I want you guys to do now is go to uh, the other um, link in the school in the same folder, and I want you to make a copy of this um, Google Doc, or I want you to take out a note, piece of notebook paper and write it down on a separate sheet of paper. But I want you to write the reactants or the pieces of the puzzle, okay, the pieces that are going to create the um, final a product, all right, the reactants for cellular respiration, the reactants for photosynthesis, the reactants for lactic acid, okay? That would be the last slide that we just set, showed. Then I want you to put the reactants in symbol form. So instead of writing out the reactants for cellular respiration would be oxygen and glucose. Instead of writing them out, you'd write them in their chemical form. So you'd write uh, O2 plus C6H12O6. Okay. And then for the products, okay, what does cellular respiration produce? Well, it produces ATP, it produces CO2, and it produces water. Okay. And so you just kind of go down this list, and this is going to be kind of your cheat sheet um, that you can draw on and look at when you need to, when you need a little refresher on this material. All right. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you later. Make sure to write these notes down, and I'll see you later. Peace.